The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. This is Vince Russo's The Brand. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Lion Tigers, Bears, and Disco. I'm Vince Russo. I'm here along with the co-host, Jeff Lane, and the special guest, uh, the Disco Inferno, Glenn Gilberti. What's going on, fellas? Everything's thrown into chaos here. I got another email from Mr. Glenn saying he doesn't agree to the format, so I, I don't know what we're going to do here. Another episode under protest. Uh, what is it exactly you don't agree with with the uh, uh, format? Um, I just don't agree to the format. I mean, you you know, you you, get, you guys are bringing me on, and you want to just talk about what you want to talk. There's never been any email sent to me since I've been doing this uh, during the before the show or during the show. Say, hey, is there anything you would like to discuss? That's never that that email has never what been would sent. You, okay, what would well, you like? Well, to combat that though, Vince, there was a time he has DM'd me a few things, and I've put them immediately into yeah. the. Well, what what, what would true. you what would you like to discuss today? That's not on the format. Smoky Mountain Pro. <laughs> There's no such thing. Okay, whatever that thing. Okay, I want to talk about um, Rocky Mountain Pro, the Rocky yes, Mountain Pro. That's right. And I want to talk about the Asinine. Uh, I watched it. I want to talk about the Asinine rule that you are not allowed to uh, hit an opponent in the face. Well, no, close, like, close, 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 fist. close fist to the face. Yeah. Yeah. So, so wait a second. Okay, time, time out. Let me oh, wait, no, hold on. Be, before, you, before you okay. go off, let me explain to you that that was an existing rule at Rocky Mountain Pro before I, gave, I became a part of the organization, so I am honoring their rule. That's not a Vince Russo rule before you go off. Okay, well, you're, like, in charge of creative. I mean, you're not going to – I mean, you, were, you have been on record – that the WWE guys, and I've been on record about this too, they don't look like they're fighting, okay? You have a rule in your that organization that prohibits people from looking like they're fighting because if you, if you hit a person with a closed fist in the face, you're being disqualified, so you can't fight. So instead what we're doing is is we're clubbing each other in the side of the, uh, the, the, side of the jaw and the head with forearms, which we know, based on what we've seen repeatedly, over the course of time, can cause concussions. So I thought that you would be smart enough, knowing that that like uh, that that style promotes the risk of concussions, okay? And that we, you would teach guys to throw, you know, guys throwing working punches would be a better uh, better course of action to take, you know, because that that's what I teach. What I teach in, in my classes is I teach people to look like they know how to fight. For working punches, which are safer than forearms delivered to the side of the head, which, the, the, regardless of whether you can do them correctly or not, it, the, the practicing of doing them puts the person you're doing it with at risk. Because if you don't do it correctly while you're learning how to do it, you're going to clobber somebody, and you can cause a concussion. Okay, so I just thought that uh, I, I think I'm just giving you guys some a bit of constructive criticism. I think that's ridiculous. That that. You know, in this day and age of all the stuff that's going on, all the criticism, you know, you're you're an organization that basically is promoting, you know, the same type of style that these guys are that, that these guys are doing. You know, they may not do the high risk and stuff and everything and all that, but but teaching, you know, having people forearming each other in the head constantly and all that is just not a uh, that's a recipe for disaster. It's an accident. It's an injury waiting to happen. <laughs> you know what though? Like I agree with with your points you're making, Glenn, but I also see the other side because at the end of the day, it's supposed to be a wrestling match. But like, if you could punch people in the face, why would you give them a super? Bro, you can come. Okay, time out. We're not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna go to go there with the, you know, what if? What, bro, if, what if you threw a guy into the ropes? Why would he not grab the ropes? What if you? Bro, there's a million what ifs in professional wrestling. The Fair wrestling enough. that we have talked about that worked, back in the day, was grown men fighting each other. Stone Cold and Steve Austin punching each other back and forth in the face. Stone Cold okay. and Stone Cold and Steve Austin <laughs> punched each other Stone back and, and Bret, forth in the Stone face. Stone Cold and Bret Hart. Wow. Stone Cold and Bret Hart. But Stone isn't that the, isn't Stone that a, a given rule though in wrestling? The closed fist punch is illegal in every form of wrestling. Bro, it's never been. Who's ever been disqualified for using closed fist? All right. So then why why are you why are you, why, why are you talking about this unless somebody gets disqualified? 
No, because they're not even allowed to do it. That's, that's, that's not the point. And, just, and bro, and, and and they they don't do a lot of things in wrestling. They're not allowed to do. Bro, you can't defend this. Okay, if you're sitting there and talk about you want your well, you you I'll bring I'll, 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 I'll bring Matt. You guys Matt aren't down. even allowed to look like you're fighting. I'll okay? bring. I'll, I'll, I, mean, I, don't, I'll, I don't know what what your, what your argument is I'll here. I'll bring Matt. You know? yeah, I'll bring Matt Yaden on the show, and you could debate. It. That's you're a Matt Yaden. That's a Matt Yaden rule. That's a Matt Yaden rule. Watch this. Tell Matt Yaden to watch this. This. Well, watch, watch the first two minutes of this show. He'll see it. And I think it's ridiculous. I think we need to get more back into the simulated fighting instead of the clobbering each other with forearms and the side of the head and stuff and everything, which we have known for a long time now can cause concussions. I mean, I don't know what's so, what's so difficult here. Glenn, what do you think of the tag team rule, though, in Rocky Mountain Pro where they can only break up one, one pin attempt a match or they're disqualified? Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I guess, that's fine. But if you, as long as you, as long as you create your universe of rules and stick to them, okay, it's fine. But I think what you're doing is with this punch to the face thing, you're inhibiting, you know, like bro, you you're gonna have two guys in a big feud with each other that want to kill, they're cutting promos and want to kill each other, and they're gonna go out in the middle of the ring and throw legal forums to, to each other. I mean, come on. You know, well, geez. bro, there's also there's also the other side of the coin, and the other side of the coin is when guys are allowed to p punch each other in the face. You you got the Sami Zayn Kevin Owens exchange that we see other week every that's week, the, and each guy is going argument. right left, and and no, nobody's trying to protect themselves. Argument. So you, you you'd rather see bad punching in the face than no punching in the face. No. No, I, I said, bro, that, I'm not. We're not talking. You brought up an example that has nothing to do with this. Okay, yes, it has so everything to. Bro, bro you how many times teach. have we seen guys punching each other in the face and not defending it? Bro, it happens well, all. It happens all the time. But that's pro wrestling, guys. Well, the, the fact that guys don't do it good doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to do it. You know what you guys could use this as a seminar for me at that at that Rocky oh, Mountain Pro, God. and I could teach those guys. How much? Will, all right. How, mu how much will you pay us to come do a seminar? I would do it for free if it would improve. If you guys would, if it would improve your product. Ah, right, you heard that. Go ahead, Jeff. Everything he's saying makes sense, but the one thing that I uh, that I want to point out, though, like you said, if these guys are in a legit feud and they and why are they going to follow the rules and not punch? But don't the UFC guys like McGregor and Diaz didn't they follow the rules in their match, even though you know they had a big feud with each other? Yeah, but they're I mean, they're they're, league, they're fighting for a prize. You don't want to get disqualified, you lose. You go down. You don't want a loss on your record. It's just a shoot. You don't want to lose. <laughs> you don't want to lose a fight. If you well, I mean, the, fight, these characters don't, don't want to lose either, though, right? Yeah, but the, my point is that the, the, that's, yeah, the rule exists, but it's a silly rule that exists. Okay. Okay, that's all. That's what I'm saying. Like, can I ask you a question? Because I've been thinking about this. Because I was on the Conan show the other day. Because you know uh, they needed ratings, so they called me, and I was happy to do it. When you do Conan's show, do, does Conan see you or is it just audio? It's audio. It's see, that's, audio. Why, that's why he's allowed on the show. Because if, if Conan saw his smugness, the, I was talking about this today on Chicken Necks, it's the smugness of Gil Bernetti that drives me crazy. And if Conan actually saw your smugness, I don't think he'd have you on the show. Well, let me let me talk about my, my First of all, it's not smug. I'm, I'm very confident when I say it. If you think it's smug, I don't... I don't that that's your your opinion, okay? But I would think before we start, I, you know, last week this show got off the rails a little bit and was kind of thinking. I think it's a perfect opportunity. I'm coming back on for you to apologize to your uh, apologize to your uh, your listeners for your disgusting use of profanity throughout the podcast. Okay, okay? Wow. I mean, you are go time. You just go ahead and do it because you need to do it because you're a Christian. And okay. you were cussing like a truck driver last week, and okay. I think you should you should apologize. All right. I mean, Jeff, I, Mike, Jeff, should, should Vince apologize? Okay. He he does have a potty mouth, filthy, okay. filthy mouth. Let's go, Jeff. Well, last week, Vince, you you accused Mr. Gilberti of kissing the backside of Chris yeah. Jericho. Now, whether that's true or not, that's up to well, you. Well, it, it was determined debate. truth on on Conan's show. You didn't get okay. to hear that. Okay. But it, it was it wasn't determined. up. It, it's not up yet at the time of this filming. But keeping okay. it one hundred, the newest episode. But okay. listen. I might start myself because I think Chris Jericho has the biggest balls in the history of the universe after this story. After the Randy Orton-Brock Lesnar match, Chris Jericho was up backstage because he thought that Brock was possibly shooting on Randy. Brock came backstage. He heard Chris Jericho say that this was BS, and then Brock told Jericho apparently that this was none of his business. So this, shut, this set off Jericho, excuse me. 
and, and he kept asking questions, Brock pushed him. So then Jericho rushed in, apparently, and tried getting face-to-face -face with Lesnar. And this is the story that, that Brock kissed Jericho on the forehead and then said, kiss me back, P-U-S-S-Y. Jericho didn't back down. He actually stepped up and got in Lesnar's face ready to fight, but then Brock put his arms behind his back and saying, hit me or kiss me, bitch. So everybody swarmed in, including Triple H, Vince McMahon, Vince was apparently yelling at Chris Jericho to be more professional, which they're saying that Jericho fired back saying Lesnar was the per unprofessional one who started shooting on his co-worker, meaning Randy Orton, to which Vince McMahon replied, it's a work, what's wrong with you? So then they separated sides. So now, now, what, no matter who's right in this situation, I just have to say that Chris Jericho definitely has the biggest sack of testicles in the world going face-to-face -face with Brock Lesnar at his size. Well, I gotta ask you this though, and I said this on uh, Conan's show. But what's more badass, what Jericho did or what Lesnar did? I mean, you know, kiss me, kiss me, you p u s s y. I mean, that's pretty badass in itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially if you weigh a weigh a guy by 50, 50 pounds. Well, yeah, but but, right? but 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 okay, <laughs> but, but, but wait, wait, you know bro, what I'm saying right bro. away to defense. Lesnar was not the aggressor no, here, bro. Le Lesnar did not go after Jericho. So what does the fact that he outweighs Jericho have to do with anything? Jericho well, all, brought it on. Jericho brought all, it on. First of all, the uh the the, the whole incident was with just just a shouty match basically. It was there. They weren't going to fight. They weren't going to come to blows. It was just a very heated argument between two people. Okay, but Jericho's not going to back down for anybody. We know that because like didn't back down from Goldberg. Uh, right. did, you know, he just but that's that's Jericho's mentality. His right. dad was a hockey enforcer. You know, he grew up being taught, you know, don't back down from a fight, and he's been like that since he played hockey growing up and you know everything. That that's just his mentality. He's never been a pushover. He's always stood up for himself. He's always spoken his mind. That's just that's just his that's his makeup. You know, regardless of how sane. He was, you know, and doing that to a UFC heavyweight champion. You know that that's another question, but but you know it it is what it is. He's he's not going back down from anybody. What do you think of that, Vince? What do you think of this whole situation? No, I mean I, I agree. I, I think Jericho's nuts. I mean, you know, I mean he that he, but it's what Glenn said, and his father was a professional hockey player. He played for the Rangers, and, and I mean. I mean, I can't imagine that, bro. I can't imagine getting in the face of the people whose face he gets in. But I thought, you know, like I said, I thought, you know, I thought what, you know, the Lesnar side of the story was pretty impressive to me as well. You know, so I mean, you know, I think it's a, I, I'd put them both over in this. I, I think the crazy part of this whole thing was if that was a work he was supposed to cut me. What, what, what are they thinking? You know, like uh, he, he was supposed to bust him open. That's that's the thing, you know, uh, uh, by by clubbing him in the head with, with the elbow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, I mean, that's just like th think about that. That that's yeah. that's asinine. That's like that's. I mean, I, I don't. Isn't it weird that that Brock Lesnar's matches, his pay per view matches, always seem to just have hard way juice every single every single time. You know, I mean, maybe that's like their their mentality is is that well, he's the real guy. So well, that's we, that we from, should have blood in his matches, you know. I mean, from, that's, I mean from what I, I under, from what I understand, what what the WWE was trying to work was that it was a shoot, and Lesnar went into business for himself during the match. That's mm -hmm. what they were trying to work. From what I from what I was reading, supposedly we talked about Rudy, you know, Jeff going out there with his freaking gloves, and I even said to you, what the freak is Rudy gonna do with with his with his gloves? But from what I'm reading the referees and refs were sent to the ring not knowing what if this were real if they, you know so they they were trying to play this off as Brock went into business for himself if, if, if there was another big bully on the block to fight with him I don't understand what the point with that would be so basically the character now is Brock Lesnar can beat up these guys anytime he wants you know Let and then get fined five hundred dollars for doing it yeah, let me. Well, I think that was a storyline, though. But it is a storyline. But that's like the, the, that's that's why the storyline is so just you, you're trying to marry different universes and stuff, and it just the the, the payoff, you know, just bro, the 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 the, the 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 more of the payoff was what happened backstage as a shoot. 
right. was more of a no, payoff absolutely. than this, which is not like which which, which they which they didn't follow yeah. up on. Right, they didn't follow <laughs> up on it. Yeah, either way, they didn't, yeah. they didn't follow up on right. the work. They didn't follow up on the reality. They didn't follow up on anything because you know, like like that's the whole thing. If if the whole work was oh he went into business for himself, then the payoff on TV was oh, okay, so let's find him five hundred bucks. Well, let me ask you guys this from two from two different point of views. Glenn, from you know you being a wrestler and being one of the boys, and Vince from being in the office and being the writer. If this is accurate, if this report was accurate, this was exactly what went down. It appears that the boys were kayfabe from the finish. So, what are your thoughts on that? With you know Jericho not knowing that ahead of time that this was legit as as a work, you know, I mean not legit a, a work, you know what I mean? Do do you think that's right or wrong from from both of your perspectives? It's not, it's not his it's not his match. You know, but there's so many stooges back there. I mean, they, they get like you know, what I'm saying that they don't want. So it's a pay per view. They don't want the finish getting out. They have to keep it away from for away from everybody. They probably got 20, 20 riders in there, that, but they probably didn't tell them what the finish was because these, there's so many. You see all the information that comes out on the backstage stuff that that gets out and everything. They probably just didn't want to want to get on the web before it happened. So that's you know, I I, I can see. So of course, what you have to do, you just kayfabe everybody. Jericho wasn't in that match. You know, that's when he when he saw it, it looked it was a good shoot. You know, and and um. You know, it upset him because they, they, I guess they worked a good shoot. You know, so but uh, but yeah, but they, I, I would. There's no reason to tell that Vince has had situations like that where they didn't tell guys to finish and stuff of, of matches when they go out. I mean, that's just something that you do sometimes in this day and age. Well, you know, we, the, you know, we got to take into consideration too. Like when you say uh, when you say you know, Glenn, you know, uh, uh, Jericho got upset, bro. You got to we got to also like take into account here. There was a freaking puddle of blood in the ring. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I don't think Jericho would have had the same effect if Orton was like just out. But right. you know, there was a puddle of blood. And mm -hmm. like, you know, if if I'm Chris Jericho and I'm I don't know what his relationship with Randy Orton is, but you know, if Orton's a buddy of mine and I'm seeing them them lift up my buddy's head in a puddle of blood, and yeah. you know, this is supposed to be a work. I'm gonna freaking be upset too. So I think yeah. I think the blood played a big factor in yeah, this. Yeah, of course, of course, it's a natural reaction, you know. Yeah. So we know that Bret Hart has criticized Seth Rollins in the past over injuring, apparently Sting and John Cena breaking his nose. So as we all know by this point, Finn Balor was injured at SummerSlam, taking the power bomb into the barricade from Seth Rollins. So Nick Houseman at WrestleZone, he asked Bret Hart his thoughts on this based on his past statements. And what Brett told him was, I take no great pleasure in saying I told you so, but if you're a professional wrestler and you keep hurting opponents and or yourself, clearly you're doing it wrong. I wrestled, and this is Brett, I wrestled a very realistic and physical style, and not once in 23 years did I ever hurt one opponent ever. Seth Rollins needs to improve his technique and become the safest wrestler in the business. I have great respect for Seth, I believe he'll improve and hopefully stop hurting the talent before someone gets killed. Wrestlers have to trust one another. If a wrestler holds the life of another wrestler in his hands for the sake of his family, wife, or children, you plain and simple cannot drop it. And then Brett went on to say, I saw this coming. If anything, WWE producers are negligent for not speaking up about it to him already. Instead, they're probably gushing with joy, slapping him on the back, telling him, great job, Bill Goldberg was similar. When I think of Samoa Joe nearly killing Tyson Kidd, then see him continuing to use that deadly finish of his, I just shake my head. It's not real. It's only supposed to look real. Wrestlers are not crash, crash test dummies. Thoughts on this, Jim? Yeah, Glenn, I would love to hear, you know, again, being one of the boys, I, you know, that's, that's why I like having you on the show. Bro, I would love to hear your take on things of, bro, when a guy... I mean, badly injures three guys. G g give me a wrestler's perspective. Give me a wrestler's perspective of how something like that might get handled behind closed doors. Oh, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen stuff like that. Where, bro, they're, they're doing. That's the thing. This new style. They're, they're doing moves. You, you. I would love for anybody. There's a couple things I want to bring up here. Number one, did um, I'm trying to find it here online, but uh, Lance Storm had some great comments about this. Did Very you see similar. those, uh, Jeff? Yeah, I think it was. Can, read those. Can you find those real quick and read those while I'm talking about this? Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, but but bro, here's here's all I'd like to say is this is that 
you know, I'm, you just just rewind back to the John Cena nose incident. You know, uh, re- re- we already discussed that. You know, re- rewind back to the uh, um, Seth's comments about the John Cena incident. You know, and now yeah. let's fast forward to this. You know, there's definitely a pattern here. Bro, I was just like, anybody that, like, somebody who's been tweeting me that Taz has been on record saying that Seth Rollins is not an unsafe wrestler. And uh, have you heard about this? No, but somebody I... Somebody keeps I, tweeting me about this. I would not doubt that, and I'll tell you why, bro. Bro, do you know how I first heard about Seth Rollins? Taz. Taz. When we were on uh, at TNA, Taz was talking about this Tyler Black, Tyler Black, Tyler Black. So I don't know about Taz saying that, but I know Taz is a Seth Rollins guy, so it would not surprise me. Yeah, but all I got to say about this is this incident, this specific injury. Bro, I would defy anybody to try to tell me, a professional wrestler, how you train and practice yes. to take that move. I said How that, bro, I, as an untrained, say, as an untrained professional yeah. wrestler, I said the same thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, how? Can, yeah, there's no way, bro. It's gonna wind up however it winds up. Right. Exactly. Do you have said? Do you have Lance's comments, Jeff? He, 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 he yes, he, I do. Yeah, this was on the Wrestling Observer Radio. Lance said that when you're throwing someone backwards at stuff who is partially obstructed, I've seen guys if you come a little short, they bang their head on the barricade. Too high, you hit your back and fold yourself the wrong way. When your moves have a high risk, but the risk is on you, I don't mind it as much. But when you're throwing guys backwards, the risk is all on him, and I don't like stuff like that. I didn't like it when Sting took the buckle bomb, and I don't like it when other guys take the buckle bomb. Yeah, he put this perfectly. Lance hit him, hit the nail right in the head. He's putting his opponents at risk. If you want to do dives over the table, if you want to do something to put yourself at risk, go ahead and knock yourself out. But when you're putting your opponent at risk, and where there is a repetitive pattern here of injuries occurring, God. it's like, bro, somebody. I mean, I don't. The, the fear's the funniest thing. Have you noticed that Seth Rollins has made no comments so far? Yeah. Have it, no, for four days now. They're, and I trust me. I bet you he doesn't. I bet you they well, keep him from me because they don't even want him addressing that. Here's the part. Here's the part that like I don't understand for the life of me. And Brett brought it up in his comments. Glenn, where's the agent of this match? Bro, you, 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 got, the, you, you gotta you, you, wait a minute. Let me just yeah. say something. You gotta assume the agent is a veteran. You gotta mm-hmm. assume the agent is listening to this and anticipating what we're talking about, what Lance Storm is talking about. Isn't isn't it really the responsibility of the agent to exnay that and say no for the protection of the other wrestler? Bro, of, of, of course, and I have the perfect solution to stop all these injuries that these guys are getting, and it's very, very simple. You find the guy, if it's an injury caused by recklessness, a guy gets injured, we lose him off TV because he's hurt, you f- you suspend the wrestler that, that performed the move, and you suspend the agent for the match. Now, if guys now basically are thinking like, geez, well, if I do this and it screws up, I might get sent home, or I might get fined, or I might get suspended. It's going to cost me in the pocket. Maybe they'll start using and applying some common sense when they're laying their matches out with regards to injury prevention because they're just not doing it. I mean, I'm watching it. Bro, you go back and watch the show on Monday, and and uh, Neville's doing a, a a 450 off the apron onto the floor, and I'm like, uh, okay, bro, that's that's great, but do you understand the stress of at the point of impact on your knees on the floor when you're hitting that? I mean, like, the, this is – bro, these guys that, that wrestle these days, it's like they're – I, I want to use the word stupid. It's like they're very stupid when they're laying out their matches because they just have no clue what hurts. I say, and they know it hurts because they feel it, but, but like, haven't they seen what this does to your future? And your body, and you know, when, when when your knees break down, it's because you placed a lot of stress on them over a period of time. You know, when your shoulder breaks down, it takes repeated stress, repeated stress, and they can't handle it more, and boom, it, it goes. But but these guys just keep going and going and going and dropping each other on each other's necks and, you know, just lay, laying, folding your body over and doing a slam where you're, you know, where you're, you're, you're hitting the middle part of your back, you know, and, and uh, vertical on the... On, and you, I'm watching this. It's like, what are these guys thinking? This is not, you know, like, the, don't they know that that can cause injury? And apparently they don't. And apparently the agents don't either, God. because 
They're getting pops. You know, they're Glenn, getting the "This is awesome" chant. Man, I gotta tell. Like, and everybody said, and they think what they're doing is great. I gotta so, tell you something. I like what you just said. I like what you suggested. But bro, you gotta take this one step further now. Bro, you know all these freaking all the lawsuits the WWE get hit with right and left about wrestlers not being protected. They knew about the concussions, this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. Whether they're frivolous lawsuits or not, bro, like that that doesn't matter. But when I hear you explain this, Glenn, does this not open up a door for a wrestler to say, well, wait a minute. There was an agent in the match. There was a veteran responsible for the match. I was afraid to say anything in fear of my losing my job. The agent, the WWE management, did not protect me from getting my back broken. Uh, it could, but you, you know, I, it's it's you're voluntarily voluntarily doing this. I will tell you this though, bro. Do you remember the? Uh, were you in WCW when Sid snapped his leg when he jumped off the rope? Of course, bro, I was. Remember, that, remember that he didn't want to do it. Yeah, and John, Johnny, Johnny Ace kind of forced him to do it. Yep. You know, it's <laughs> like you know, and Sue sued, 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 right? Yep, yep, he sued. Yeah, I mean, like, so, you know, bro, so guys will, you know, I, I wonder if that, I doubt that goes on now because yeah. now the guys are just voluntarily performing all these, yeah, you know, I mean, th these moves and stuff. I think so. I, I don't know, bro. It's just, it's just uh, there, there's a lot of this out there too, man. I mean, you're yeah. talking like, you know, your boy, uh. You know, uh, some of these guys are going into wrestling in that, that, that best of the, the BOLA, that uh, bowl of tournament and stuff and everything, and they're all going to be doing high risk, you well, know, and everybody's going to be you, talking about how great it is. And this you is got to see what well, I got. And, like, and, 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 yeah. the, the devastating injury is, is on the horizon. Yeah. Okay. And exactly. The it's not, and, yeah. and TV is on. It's, it's, the storm is coming. Yeah. The clouds are in yeah. the distance. You know, they're raising the bar too high. Yeah. We are going to see it. Somebody's, okay, then, some, I, some, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna wind up in a wheelchair. Now we're gonna yeah. look at the way we work. And, yeah. and and Glenn, what's worse to me is the freaking girls doing it. The the girls yeah. that weigh a hundred and twenty pounds, bro, doing that. Nothing to nothing to to, to soften the fall. Nothing. Yeah. Look at look Sasha Banks. I mean, I'm telling you, bro. She she came within an inch of of, of breaking her back yeah. at yeah. SummerSlam. I know. <laughs> what, what, what do you want to tell them? I mean, I, I, we, I, this has been my stance for years. Yeah. You know, so I mean, like, you know, nobody listens to me, but all we're doing is getting guys hurt and hurt, and more guys hurt, and then the well, guys I, hurt. Well, well, you know, you know. to be honest, I don't really know if it's in anybody's best interest to listen to you. You know, well, now the, that you well, put it that way. Well, David, I'll tell you what, because like, this will sound like an egotistical thing to say, all right? But if you look at my body of work of things that I've uh. discussed in the past. And what has come to fruition, uh, you know, and, yeah. and stuff, everything, bro. You'd be hard pressed. You'd be hard pressed to argue against the fact that I'm one of the industry yeah. leaders when it comes to knowledge about this business. Yeah, yeah. you're okay. no, you're no Stradon. I'm going to call you no Stradon. No, but I mean, okay? no Stradon. In the past, yeah. that they, they've come through. Bro, I started talking, Jeff. How long ago did I start talking about this? I think 2007 was that article. Okay, so no it's like, you know, but you know what's you know what's even more amazing. You know, on, you, you know what's you know what's even more amazing than all this when you when you look at this today, my, how freaking amazing is it for Bret Hart to say in 23 years I never hurt an opponent? That's yeah. on. Can, can well, you well, imagine? No, wait a minute, well, hey, 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 Glenn. I if can you, say if the you, exact same thing. Glenn, I if, can if, say if the you exact had same guess, thing. If you had okay. a guess, you look at Bret Hart 23 years. How many freaking matches are we talking about that he never hurt an opponent? That's unbelievable, bro. Yeah, it's unbelievable. No, no, no it's not. Because yeah. you watch what Brett does. Work. And it's a work. It's right, and he knows how to work. Right. You know, he knows how to get through the match without hurting anybody or yeah. getting hurt, you know? So, yeah. you know, watch Jeff Jarrett work. Yeah, no, you know, absolutely. Watch, I'm just saying, just watch, watch guys that haven't gotten hurt and watch how they work, and their matches are fine. Hey, Clay, can, I, can I ask you another question, bro, about this? This is this is off. We're going off uh, Jeff's thing oh, again. Because it reminded just... me when I went to work the indie show this, this weekend. Glenn, can you explain to me, like, when you shake a hand with a wrestler, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you get that pussy handshake? Oh, that those are guys that are jabronis. That just what? Like, what, make, what? What is they that? Used to be the wrestler, they used to be the wrestler handshake light because we work light. Like you touch, like we're light. You know, and that's what that means, so bro. That, that's what it means. You know, we're light. We're not for hard. That that's a but nobody does that. If you, if somebody does do that to you, then they're playing along with the like doing the thing because they heard this is what you're supposed to do. But oh, I ever brother. since I got in, I used to do that shake the face the first year, but then after that, everybody just started like 
especially where I, I, you know, down south in Georgia, where I wrestled a lot of the Indies, we were all shaking each other's hands because we were all wrestling each other all the time. We weren't doing the, you know, because we knew each other. And then when yeah, I got it's WCW, like the two, shit, it's like the yeah. two finger gimmick, you know. I'm like, what the frick yeah. is that, bro? It's just, it, that's all. I don't. I, I, people still do that. Yes, yes, oh, more than God, one. I, yes. I thought, I thought I thought it was outdated. Seventeen no, years ago. No, no, no. They're still doing it. All right. What's what's next? Uh, what's next? This is interesting. This next thing is interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, well, sites like TMZ and other entertainment sites have been pr- reporting for a few weeks now about the feud between The Rock and his Fast 8 co-star Vin Diesel. And The Rock had made some comments about that his some of his male co-stars conduct themselves as stand-up men and true professionals, but others don't. And the ones that don't are too chicken SHIT to do anything about it anyway candy asses. Well, then it came out that he was talking about Vin Diesel. And then there were some rumors that Vin Diesel, as soon as the scenes were done, he left the set. He had heat with The Rock. Well, now this magazine, Life and Style magazine, is reporting that an insider, so this is a rumor, but an insider is claiming that this is just a stunt, this is a work, to lead to a match at WrestleMania 33, which, interestingly enough, is the same month that Fast 8 is released in theaters. So, what do you guys think of this? Is it possible it's a work? Could Vin Diesel be in WWE? Is this smart knowing you know knowing knowing The Rock coming from wrestling? What what are you what are your thoughts on this? I'd have to say, bro, my knee jerk reaction is because, bro, like I was reading about this because you know I go on TMZ and I read a lot, and it was like the set was like the split locker room, like that there were the, the, things happened on the set. There were closed door meetings. Here's what I think happened, bro. I think there was legitimate heat, and then Rock said, "Wait a minute, hold on." You know what I'm saying? I th- I I think quite possibly that happened where there was heat, and Rock's holy crap, me and Vin Diesel WrestleMania, the movies coming out at the same time. I don't think the heat was created from the beginning. That's that's what I would guess. Glenn. I, I can't even comment. This is the first thing I've heard of it. I can't. I mean, I'd like to comment on, it, but I, this is—it's all hearsay. I don't know. I mean, Glenn, you, can, you, can you? Can, I mean, you want me to make? Yeah, you know, I can't really make a prediction or say anything about this. Can you tell everybody for the record? Because they ask me this all the time. Can you tell everybody for the record that uh, the the heat between you and I is not a work? And I, in fact, really don't care for you that much. Can you just – because everybody's asking me, oh, did it work? Are you really pissed at him? And no matter how many times I say I don't really like the guy, nobody will believe me. So can you confirm that, please? Well, I, don't, I don't care. You, you, you just confirmed it. Why am I confirming it? I mean, I don't, you know. You see, you see the I don't, smugness? I don't, I don't, I don't, just, I don't, you see, I don't, now, now that, wasn't dislike, no, first of, that wasn't smug. That wasn't smug. I don't smug. dislike you. That I wasn't you're smug. Very, you, you're very – Extremely unappreciative of what I what I bring to the show. I mean, that's that's I'm on record with that. It's pretty, you know, you know. I mean, the people on Twitter see it too. There's a lot of tweets about the lack of respect that you deliver to me. And you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I mean, like you you you're jealous. I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to tell you about lack of respect. You're you're jealous because you're jealous because I know a little bit more about this business than you do. Yeah. Because I've actually done it. Yeah. For a, for a period of time, you're just a writer. Yeah. Okay. And how, you know. So and, and, I mean, and how many the level, of knowledge, the level of knowledge I'm bringing to this? Yeah. Far supersedes yeah. anything you've done because how many, I actually have performed in the ring yeah. for years. Yeah. And how many? Okay, so w, that's, yeah. And how many WCW? How many WCW World Titles did you hold? None. Three. I, I had no World Three. Titles, heavyweight titles. None. Bro, just because Zero. you wrote, how many, you wrote no, yourself no, in the ring, no, winning the belt doesn't, doesn't make that's you know, a technicality. That's a technicality. You still can't work. That's a technicality, you know? bro. You know, you still can't work. You were the one that got the concussions, not me, because you don't know how to work. You know, you're the one that had the headaches and the depression. Right, listen, I, want, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking right, about. Listen, you, you want, you you want, you I'm, I'm, I'm trying to apologize. You know? I'm trying to. You, apologize. you got you got speared into the, into the rail, and you got a concussion, and you got headaches and depression, which is what you deserved for booking yourself to win the world title. What's next, Jeff? Well, Brendan Dassey, for those that don't know, he was one of the people that was featured in the documentary on Netflix, Making a Murderer. He was convicted as a 16-year-old of murdering a woman, and his conviction was just overturned. And for those that saw the documentary, they, they, they saw when he was in jail, and he didn't really understand what was going on. He asked his mom on the phone if he was going to be out in time to see WrestleMania. 
So, you know, everybody understood that this guy was a big WWE fan. He was a big WrestleMania fan. Well, now that his conviction was overturned and he's being released from prison after nine years, a porn company is talking with his family to make his dream come true and get him to WrestleMania. So apparently this porn company, X Hamster, says that they're working with Dassey's family to actually send him to WrestleMania 33 this year in Orlando. They said, we are pleased that we can make this young man's dream of going to WrestleMania come true. This is very interesting because, you know, he, he's a he's a celebrity now, whether this kid knows it or not and his family knows it or not. He was convicted of murder, released because of the way that he was interrogated. So they're not saying he's innocent. They're saying he was convicted under false interrogation tactics. So it's possible that maybe he was involved. We don't know at this point. But we know that Sean Waltman had tweeted that he was interested in helping getting this man to WrestleMania. So, what, I mean, this whole thing is very interesting that a porn company is being involved. And I find it hard to believe that, you know, that if a, if a porn company is getting him there, that WWE would want any part of this. You know what I mean? Well, I just don't understand. Where's, where's the PR for any company, whether it's a porn company or any company? What's the PR in sending this kid to WrestleMania? I don't it understand. Huge, it was a big story. I mean, it was a, did you watch it? Make it I, of course I did, but it, this yeah. isn't this isn't. If I, a that was good... say, you, you should bring the kid into Rocky Mountain Pro for publicity. I'm being serious. I mean, if like you know, this is like this is it's a publicity. Bro, it's a, you put the belt on David Arquette and yourself for crying out loud. You can't bring one of the you know a guy that was on Netflix's uh, hottest Jeff, series Jeff, and stuff. You bring one of his show this for is publicity. What I mean. you know, Jeff, I mean, Jeff, <laughs> this is this is how to understand. This is how it starts. Because I've been trying to be polite, I've been trying to be nice. This is how he throws the barbs out there. So, so you know, his friends like Dave Meltzer, you know, will go, "Hey, yeah, go, go, Glenn, yeah, you tell Vince, you tell him he put the belt on David." Okay, you you see how he does that, bro? That's how the trouble starts. He just... he, he placates, he placates to that audience, bro. So they put him over that. Oh, he came on, Ru he went on Russo's show. And stuck it up Russo's backside for putting the belt on Orquette. He, he no, thinks I, he no, thinks no, I don't no. know we, what's going on. Referencing publicity stunts. It's that, it's that simple. And you're going off a thing, making I'm trying to insult you. It's a public. If, if you brought him on Rocky Mountain Pro, bro, it's a publicity stunt. It gets you publicity. Okay, people, which brings eyes to the product. Okay, you're saying, oh, well, bro, it's, it's common sense. You know, big, big, uh, I, Jeff, big go thing on, go, go, go on. Well, it's possible it's a porn company. This guy's been in prison that's for nine weird. years. When's that, he that, seen that, boobs, you know? That is, that is the weirdest thing, that, that a porn company got involved with this. That, that's it's like, not you know, weird, bro, because the kid's not playing with a full deck, so the porn company is going to try to get him in a porn film. Why do you think they're <laughs> doing it? Talk about somebody that doesn't get it. Why do you think they're doing it moron because they know the kid isn't cooking with all four burners so they'll get him alone with his Wrestlemania tickets and his foam hand and they'll talk him into doing a porno. Hello? Okay. Genius Nostradamus that that you don't see though that that you can't connect the dots but yeah, I don't know nothing. who would, but that's a, here's the difference though I don't know who would want to watch this troubled kid in a porno it's not like you know. It's not like this. Like this isn't like Teen Mom or something. This kid's like a, a mentally handicapped guy, you know. <laughs> so I mean, that's so uh, that that's why I don't think that you know, like putting this kid in a porno. Like, who who would who would want to see that? You know what I'm saying? This is not a, uh, you know, like like a mainstream star. You know that they're they're putting in there. The kid the kids you know he's what he is. He's a troubled kid with the mental problems. Go, go. You know what's funny last week? Let me tell you something. You know, uh -huh. you know what, the, what the funniest thing about the show last week is that when I would make a point sometimes, I, there's a few times where I really just shut you guys up a few times. You know, Jeff, we, I, when, I Jeff, say things, can, you, Jeff, know, can, have no, Jeff, you have nothing to say, and it's like Jeff, quiet. I swear to God, seconds, if you, know, you go not, back and you yeah, look at all those Jeff, shows. Be honest. You heard Jeff, the show. If is you that go not back. Jeff, if you go back and look at our shows, literally, he, he, here's what happens. 45 minutes in, my head starts going in my hands like this. 45 minutes into every show. Look at every one of them, bro. Because he can't behave himself. He can't come on here one time as a guest and not take his cheap shots and not try to get over with the internet. He can't do that for one week. Well, in his defense, though, he says a lot of things on Twitter that are not what the internet wants to hear. 
the same. He says a lot of the same. You both say a lot of the same things. Please, that's don't, that's don't. what drives. It. Seriously, it, it, it's no. hilarious because you guys argue all the time, don't but you guys me. basically say the same things just I, in different ways. Let's talk about Eva Marie. That's <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I always have time to let's, talk let's, about. Eva. Also, let's 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 listen, if you want to bring this up. Uh, Can we go on your Twitter timeline and read the negative comments you made about me specifically on your uh, on your on your Twitter comments? You know, and I'm not. I, if you just expect me to just like come on here and pretend that you didn't tweet these, you know, I mean, like th that's fine. But I mean, you know, I'm a grown man, and I am not going to sit here and let you try and publicly. Do you have any of the tweets? Without having, without having. No, I don't have to tweet. Then it's hearsay. I just come on your show. Then it's hearsay. I just come on your show. If, to if, if, if I was okay. Judge Judy and you don't have any of the tweets, Judge Judy no, would tweets. throw it away and say it's hearsay. I don't want to hear it. It's hearsay. Tweets are right here. You said it's you want to bring me in. Here's reason. You would pay me. Here, here it is right here. What? I'll hire. Okay. Like right here. It says this. I hope you guys on Smoky Mountain. That's what people call it Smoky Mountain. That's great. I hope you guys on Smoky Mountain Pro signing Disco or signing Disco Inferno as a part-time wrestler like rest like Lesnar. And then you tweet back to the guy, I'll hire him full time not to wrestle. Now what's wrong with that? It's a it's a slight at me, okay, it's, it's a negative it's trying to embarrass me. It's trying to make fun of me, okay? Uh, then you had a couple, I'm not going to spell it. I mean, yeah, people, oh, yeah. people that see your timeline know that you disrespect me on Twitter. Okay? Can we they know talk this. about Eva Marie, please? We can talk about Eva Marie, and she was suspended also, just like Paige and Del Rio, for violating the WWE wellness policy. Well, TMZ is reporting that it was because she tested positive for Adderall, which apparently was the same substance that Roman Reigns was suspended for. It's a ADD drug. It helps you focus. But... TMZ is also reporting that Eva Marie told her that she's told them, excuse me, that she was planning on appealing this because her prescription was from her legitimate doctor. So she posted on Instagram, I am disappointed that the suspension has occurred, yet understand and respect that the WWE upholds their wellness policy to the letter and won't compromise on its integrity. I violated policy by not turning in portions of required paperwork in the time frame WWE Medical deemed timely. I look forward to my return. Thank you for your support. So my question for you guys is, deemed timely seems like kind of a vague thing. If that's what's in the, the policy that it's deep, you have to turn it in in a timely fashion that's not very specific but at the same time is this her fault for knowing the rules and not getting this stuff turned in or should WWE kind of say okay well you do have a prescription for it so that's fine it's totally her fault she knows the policy and the policy requires if you don't follow the policy you break the policy there's penalties 30 days she didn't get it in time well, what, what are they going to do is that, you can't like you can't you know like like sh sh you know compromise the letter of the law you know, like, oh well, she got it a few days. She got it a few days in, in a few days. Like, no, she she got. Bro, you, it, when you're talking about your your wellness policy, if you have to get your prescriptions and these things in on time, do them first thing. You know, this is like it's funny, like in, like in, uh like at our at our in Vegas, you have to um, you have to get your uh, sheriff's card to work. Okay, you have to you have to have a, a, a sheriff's card. So when you clock in, if your sheriff's card ready to expire, every day. It shows the date that your sheriff's card is expiring for 30 straight days, okay? And people still come into work, and their sheriff's card is expired, and they can't work. And I'm like, when you saw this the first time that you had like 30 days to do this, why didn't you do this right away? You know, so it's like people just are, are procrastinate, and sometimes it gets, them, it gets them in trouble, you know? Wait a minute. Are you saying you're a sheriff? Bro, did you, oh my god. What a sheriff? sheriff Bro, uh, uh, who? Vin, Jeff, he's gonna what, sound. What did, I, what Vin, did Vin say, I didn't hear what you said. People, sheriff. people that listen to Las Vegas, people that live in Las Vegas are gonna. They live. They watch this. Are gonna think. Yeah, that people an that lie. live in Las Vegas. Unfortunately, the other forty-nine states don't live in Las Vegas, bro. So what did you say? You have to have a sheriff's card to work, which means you have to go to the fingerprint bureau, get fingerprinted and do a background check, and they give you what is called a sheriff's card, which is a work card. They call it in Vegas. In Vegas I, I didn't know. It. Jeff, did you know that? No, I've never heard of that, but it sounds okay. like it's just a, it's a work permit label. Yeah, but, okay, but, yes. the, but living in Rochester, New York, did you ever hear that called the sheriff's card? No, no but, but, I when, but when I was but under I 16, you... I had to get one. It was but called a work how, permit. Right, a work but per I don't know how you work permits you in the other 49 states. You weren't paying attention to what I was saying because you go, wait, what are you calling yourself a sheriff? 
No, I wasn't calling myself a sheriff. I was telling a story about the cards expiring. Like, you know, Jesus. No, no. Let, 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 let me tell you what happened there. Well, you no. used the term that only people in Las Vegas would know. The rest of the United States don't know what a sheriff's card is. It's a work permit. If you would have said work permit, I would have understood now the fact is, you you are some kind of a bouncer or something at this club, wherever you work. So I thought, well, maybe there's some kind of sheriff, security, stuff. So that's what I thought, bro. Okay. Anybody could have any made that mistake. Right. Yes, so probably one out of a two out of a hundred people probably would have made the mistake. You and Brandon Massey, from oh, that's that's whatever that nice. probably make fun of people. Made, the make fun too. of people with right. handicaps that's now. I, 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 I want to this, Jeff. I, I, want, I want you right. to put a disclaimer up cut. on this show that you know my Disco's views and and his shots at handicapped people have nothing to do with Vince Russo. I want a disclaimer up immediately because you heard no, what no, he no, just no, said. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is a this is a shot at you. This is a shot at you for being mentally handicapped. Okay, not not a, not a other mentally. This is a shot at you for being mentally handicapped. Okay, for having a low IQ. Jeff, that's, you know what the problem is? He gives these answers like he knows everything because he's so freaking smug, but he he doesn't state the obvious. And the obvious with this Lisa Eva Marie thing is what I've been saying for months. Okay, bro. They don't. They, they tell you, oh, so and so has failed the drug test. That's that's public. But they can't tell you why because that's private. So, so now, the, as far as we know, she, she who knows? She's on steroids. She's on cocaine. She's on this, that, and the other thing. As far as we know, because the WWE doesn't say anything, that she had to go out and say, "No, I got my paperwork in late." See, that's the problem that I've been saying for months <laughs> about. Oh, we'll we'll say they failed the, the test, but we won't tell you why. Right, exactly, Vince, because it's a part of a like if it's a if it's a medical issue, you're not allowed to reveal people's medical records. Okay, if she is being prescribed Adderall, that's none of your business. That's nobody's business. If she wants to bring that up, she can do that. But I, you got to have more common sense to know that you can't just release people's medical information to the public. That's against the law. Doctors are not allowed to do that. Okay, like you can't, they, they, doctors can't, you can't go to a doctor and he say, hey, oh, well, Vince just left you, he's got cancer. You know, you can't, like, you, you see, just can't. See, again, you can't again, 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 you're, again, you're being a bonehead because not everybody fails the test because they had a doctor's prescription to take something. Some people fail the test. Okay, so it's, it, it's, it's not our business to know she got her paperwork in late, so we're supposed to assume she's a drug addict. She said that. The, the, the WWE don't have to say, make a comment about this. You don't review, tell why people, we suspend people. It's in house. It's not a very, It's nobody's no, business. I, I think. But, but I think what he's let saying. Me, let me ask you a question. They, they tell everybody you, that they're suspended. If you had to, if you had, if you had a guy, okay, if you're in Smoky Rocky Mountain Pro, all right, and one of the professional wrestlers, okay, approached one of the female wrestlers in the locker room in a suggestive, suggestive way, maybe grabbed her butt or something, everything and all that, and she went to you guys and said, hey, look, this guy, he just sexually, he grabbed my ass, and you sent the guy home and suspended him. Would you come on your show and say, hey, we had to suspend a guy from Rocky Mountain Pro for sexual harassment because it was – no, you would just suspend the guy, tell him to disappear. You yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I wouldn't tell anybody I suspended him. Hey, that's my point, bro. I wouldn't tell anybody the guy was suspended. You, you wouldn't see him, and you could think whatever you want. They tell you this person failed the test. And then they don't tell you why. So I would not say the guy was suspended. I would just send them home. Just like professional sports do. When somebody gets suspended for, for a policy violation, they, they announce that this person was suspended for a policy violation. And that's what they kind of do. It's kind of Well, I'm going to say it is kind of weird how their wellness policy kind of mirrors sports, even though it's a work. But that's what they Jeff, try to do. You know, so. Jeff, when I – listen, make a note of this. When I suspend Glenn from this show – Re remind me to let people know why he's suspended. Okay. Okay. All right. What's next? I I'm interested to hear this one, Jeff, because I have not read this one, so I'm very interested to hear this one. Well, some people that watch SummerSlam might even not know that this was the case because the WWE muted the crowd chants. But during the Finn Balor Seth Rollins Universal Title match, 
a certain portion of the crowd was chanting, that belt sucks, or this belt sucks. Certain things about the belt, they didn't like the belt, they were chanting him and Stephanie during the entire match. In the, in the, the broadcast, they muted that stuff. But Mick Foley got on Facebook, and he said, uh, he titles this, When Smart Fans Turn Dumb. And he said, I have long felt and often spoken about the element of magic needed, needed to make a good match great and a great match classic. Finn Balor and Seth Rollins had a great match last night, a match that I was honored to watch from ringside. But instead of that element of magic necessary to turn that great match into a classic, what Finn and Seth got instead was the stench of self-congratulatory snarkiness from a very vocal minority of the sold-out Barclays Center. But a couple thousand self-important chanters mixed in with 14 other thousand people who genuinely want to watch the freaking match is an awful distraction. Yes, the chants were clever. Maybe the look of the Universal Championship isn't the one that I personally would have wanted. But remember the hardcore title? It was supposed to be a joke when it was presented to me. Broken pieces held together by duct tape. But we made that mean something special by busting our asses to show its worth. As Seth Rollins writes in his tweet, a title is more than appearance. It's about what it represents for the men fighting for it. Remember the WWE title that I won from The Rock, that moment that has gone down as among the greatest in Monday Night Raw history? Do you know that that title belt reeked of beer and mildew and stunk up my bag every day for the 37 days or whatever the exact number was that I held it? Did you know that I didn't give an F about the beer and mildew or what it looked like, what color it was, if it spun or had my name on it? I only cared about the hard work that had gone into winning it and that those responsible for running the company felt that I was worthy of holding it. There are so many times when WWE fans act in a way that makes me proud. Last night was not one of them. Last night, that vocal minority in attendance who thought their clever chants about their displeasure towards the uh, aesthetic design of a freaking belt were more important than the two guys busting their asses to have the best match possible made me feel, made me feel ashamed. I hope some of those people who were chanting about the Universal Championship, many of whom are Finn Balor fans, will read this article and realize that Finn flew his family in from Ireland to be a part of the event last night. Here's the funniest thing about this, okay, is that we know that those fans, those smart mark crowd, that SummerSlam crowd are like the biggest bunch of assholes you can get in one place at, at one time, okay? The funniest thing is we, we know this. That, that's your indie troll, you know, crowd, smart mark crowd. And, bro, the, the funniest thing is, like, they're bragging about bringing these people in and selling yeah. out shows for three straight nights with the, with this crowd. You right. know, it's like, yeah, bro, I, I, let me tell you something. You think there's a vocal minority? It's not a vocal minority. That's that crowd. These are the people that travel to the shows to get themselves over. And I'll tell you what, WWE, they're coming again in March to Orlando. You'll see these guys again, so you better not have something that they can bury because, like, if you're going to brag about bringing these guys in, then, you know, don't complain about what you get. You know, because that's what they do. They troll the shows. So that's, you know, but that's that's the funniest thing. Oh, we sold out three straight, yo. Know, we sold out Brooklyn. We sold out, it's like, yeah, you sold out with these guys. You know, <laughs> great. Good job. You go, you go, you, 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 your product gets a bunch of assholes to come and watch your show to get themselves over. That's, that's what the, that's what you did. So congratulations, right? I don't, I don't think that salty language is necessary on this show, for the record. Bro, you can't. The, the 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 one word you can use to describe a crowd those those live shows that that do those shows is assholes. Yeah. They, they, but they I, just, I do I, I do think I, mean, that, I, I, I I do think that's funny because yeah Triple H it tells us how many times they sold out SummerSlam. <laughs> like he he can, we, he's allowed to do fifty fifty booking because they sold out SummerSlam. Yeah, and, and then Mick, showed Mick, up. You know? Yeah, and then Mick Foley's <laughs> ripping the people that showed up. At SummerSlam. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Pretty it funny. is. It is funny. You know. It is very funny. Let, I, let's talk about this next story because I, I and I know Glenn's gonna call me a jackass, but I want to get his feeling for the angle. I want. I want to hear Glenn's opinion of the angle. So l let's hear your story first, Jeff. Well, it's coming out that apparently the Dudley Boys are legit free agents. That their goodbye on Raw this week was legit that it wasn't an angle, that they amicably agreed to part ways because their contracts had not been officially executed. So what we saw on Monday on Raw is apparently the last appearance of the Dudley Boys in the WWE. 
What do you think about that, Glenn? I was smartened up before the match that it was th- that was they were saying goodbye and they they were leaving, and then I saw that angle on TV and I'm like, I listen, I know this is a work, but there are times when you just got to do the right thing, and I did not think like that was the right thing, and I was like, holy crap! Like, what what did you think about that, Glenn? I, I just, just in line of what we just discussed with the fans, I can't wait for them to come back and maybe, maybe it'll be a, a spot. Oh, is that a pot pipe? Yeah. You, 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 you smoking pot on this show too now? No, no, I don't, I don't smoke pot during the day. Maybe okay, I well, should. Put that away. You're gonna get flat, you know, bro. That's, that's a great bro, idea, that's bro. Maybe that's the cure don't. to disco. Maybe that's the cure to disco. You're gonna get flagged for that. Put that away. So, uh, the um, the the funniest thing about it is when they do make their comeback. And they hit the ring, maybe like big heat on somebody, and like you know, a, a beat down on the on the Budio guys, whatever they are, the New Day. They'll beat him down. <laughs> so, you know what? Then all the crowds are gonna sit there, go, they goes go, welcome back, welcome back, welcome no, back, like, welcome when, back. When, when, you know, <laughs> say, say they're not coming back, and that was their goodbye. Okay. I mean, like, does that you, you're cool with that? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. He said they're going to the indie. They go to indies and make a fortune. Make a fortune on the indie shows. On the indies. All right. Yeah, they'll be. For, for, I mean, bro, they're sitting in a great spot. Bubba's sitting in a great spot right now. If if, if they're going to the indies, they're gonna make a fortune. They're fresh off WWE TV. That's good. Did good you, for him. Okay, see, good, this good is, for him. Jeff, this is what I'm afraid of right now because this is where he only watches the show for 15 minutes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they beat them down. They laid them out. Okay. You know, well, they put him through the table and stuff. You know, okay. They didn't put him through the tables. You didn't watch well, the I show. I thought they did the, the reverse thing through the to the, uh, the table, whatever. Oh yeah, they did put Dave on through right, the table. Right, right, right. So yeah. Well, okay, I don't understand. So like, what, what, what? How does that put that the Dudleys in a great spot? Like, they, you're telling me it puts them in a better spot if they would have went out up? Bro, they're not going. They're going to get paid. The, 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 an, an indie mark promoter. is not going to pay them less because they got laid out on Rother last no, night. No, I'm not. Yeah, but you I'm, said. I mean, here's you, what you said yeah, the opposite. They, no, no, I'm saying they have a. They, they, they're sitting in a great spot right now for indie work. Oh yeah, they're fresh oh, off TV. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, okay. They'll make a. They'll make a good chunk of change. You know, good, good. For, I mean, it's not. You know, they, they probably make more on the shows, the house shows. They're probably like they said. They'll probably make more for indie shows than they would be making on the house shows that they were working. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. They probably will. They're probably yeah, so good, good, good for Bubba. He's been a very good. They've been very, very good business. Uh, men oh, absolutely. Throughout their absolutely. Career. Very, very intelligent guy. Good. good yeah. That shows you how smart the Italians are. And maybe, uh, maybe Bubba, maybe you know, maybe he'll go back to TNA now with Corgan there. Who knows? Maybe you know, or maybe he'll come on the on the uh, on the podcast. Oh, he'll he come on. He's, he, he's he's what he he's welcomed on my podcast. Right. You understand? What what about what about uh, Irish Pat? How come he's never been on your on your podcast? Because before? he can't figure out how to get his camera to work. He's are Irish. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Oh my god! Oh, he's what? He's Irish. And that's why he can't figure out why his camera can't work. He's that's got a little mental lack. You, you just said oh, that. You just you said just, that. You just said you that, said bro. He, you said he can't figure out how to get his camera to work. He's Irish, implying that he has low mental acumen because he's Irish, which no. now in turn is going to get you more heat with your Irish no. fans. Uh, you okay? said that. I he said he can't get yeah, his camera to work, yeah. and then I said, yeah, he's. We call him Irish Pat because he's Irish. Then you uh, put no. the two <laughs> together. Oh, said. wait a minute. You got the, you got wait a minute. He can't get his camera no, 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 to work because no, he's, he's Irish. No, no, that's what, just oh, what you come said. On. <laughs> Man, All right, go ahead. It's such a poor excuse. Put over the Conan thing and go ahead. Put it all over. That's Are it. we that's, done? That's the last story. Jeff, you got any other stories? I thought that we, was we're, it. Not gonna, we're not discussing the Mrs. promo on Daniel Bryan? Yeah, da- go ahead. Discuss that. We, we can. Good, good. I, I just uh, would assume it's a work. You know what I mean? No, but, I'm, but here's what it's here's what I'm the, the funniest thing about it is though this is what people bro we've been saying it all along and I've been saying it all along the SmackDown crew has way better talkers than than, than Raw. Right. You know, you're getting good promo strength, bro. Like here's the funniest thing. You know, it's a work, whatever. But whatever he said, the the strength in his voice. Isn't it funny that like when a character raises his voice, yeah. which very rarely happens on that show, it's a good promo. Dolph raising his voice against him, bro. Says, bro, these guys like, bro. I when like I said, people are putting this. Oh wow, what great mic work. But as I say, dude, in the '80s, I grew up watching this. Right. Grown men were cutting promos, yelling in the camera, want talking about wanting to beat a guy's ass. You know that that that's how that's what we grew up watching. You know, a lot of guys raising their voice, yelling at the stuff. It's like these days, you know, it's like 
the, the, the interviews are all just guys talking to each other and stuff. Like, there's no like raising raise the voice. I thought that was, I I thought that was the funniest thing. Is everybody's putting that over now? Like, dude, this, this is you really missed a period of time in wrestling when this is all wrestlers did every week is Glenn, yell at each other. And, and, and Glenn, you know what I tell you know what I tell my students every Tuesday and Thursday. This is what I tell them. This is my number one rule. It's mm-hmm. not what you say; it's how you say it. That's yeah. it. That's a good yeah. promo. It's not the words. It's how yeah. you freaking say it. They don't understand no. that anymore, bro. Yeah, like guys, seriously, like like seriously, you watch you watch a show. Guys should be smart like this. If you watch a show, and everybody's promo for th- three, four, five straight promos is everybody talking. When you cut your promo, raise your voice. You know, because you're going to stick out because you're going to have the strength of something. If everybody's promo is everybody yelling, then talk quiet. Yeah. You know, like well, when yours comes, you know, it's like I said, it's the, it's, it's it's the knowledge of how to how to deliver to make your stuff and your words stick out on the show. You know, so yeah, it's I, I what you say, bro. You said I'll, I'll tell you what. That's probably my, that's probably a work, but there was like a lot of half shoot stuff in there and like what what they said to each other. There's no way they they scripted, you know, all of that. No. You know? Oh no no. I I, 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 so, bro, I, mean, I just that, think it was a work when right off the bat. I mean, it was it was it was it was wrestler talk. You know, wrestler talk because nobody says these things. When when Daniel Bryan used the word coward, you know, no, no, Miz, no coward. But I will tell you say this: when Daniel Bryan talked about the soft WWE style, okay, you know, like like he exemplified the soft WWE style. I'm like. Yeah, you know, that's funny. Like Miz is basically say, "Hey, the soft WWE style is like I'm still doing it." You know, you're right. you're you had to retire. Right. You know, basically, right. which is which is which is the way they should be approaching this, especially in the wake of all the injuries and stuff and everything all that. You know, so I mean, that, that's and here's the it. only other thing I don't like. This is what I didn't like: work, shoot, like it doesn't matter. I I, I and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but if I'm producing that, if I'm producing that. And Daniel Bryan takes his ball and goes home. He looks like a big puss, and that's what he looked like to me. I, I, I work, shoot, yeah. it doesn't matter. I would not have let him just walk away. Right. It would have been good if they. It would have been better if they would have had a good verbal exchange. Had to be separated. Yeah, absolutely, you know, man. Or not even. You know, that's that's the thing. They don't. They don't. Isn't it funny? We talked about this. Like whenever Brock's on the show, or so they don't produce a lot of chaos. No. You know, they, they don't like you. No. You could be the show could be way more chaotic. Yep. You know, in situations and stuff, or anything that they don't. You know, they, I guess they did it the other day with uh, who did they do where the agents came out on the um on the ramp? Uh, they separated. Oh, Ziggler, Ziggler and. Uh, Ziggler, Ziggler, and yeah, yeah. yeah. You could just, there should be more of that. Yeah. You know, there should be more like high tension at the show, and you know, security's on alert because we don't know who's going to hit the ring and stuff and all that. You know, so. Yeah. I don't know. I, go ahead. Give your uh, give your Conan thing and all that nonsense. Well, first of all, it's keeping it 100, and you're on the show this week. Okay, so we had a discussion with you. So I was late Wednesday nights on Thursdays. I enjoyed you doing that show. Much like I enjoy doing this show. I will put oh. you guys over right now. I do enjoy it. Despite your complete and utter lack of appreciation, I still enjoy doing this show. Okay, I also, you can um, find me on Twitter at, at the Real Disco, on Instagram at, uh, at DiscoMasterGG, and you can find me in Sapphire uh, working in the Sapphire Gentlemen's Club. And the day I, I've been working in the pool all summer. I work out at the pool. I like host at the pool. So, but if you want to come to the Sapphire Day, well, you know why they, you know, you know why they put you out at the pool, don't you? Why? You'll never drown with that nose, bro. I mean, that yeah, right. nose will keep you afloat in fifty. Cheap, uh, fo- Listen, now, if, you bro, want, if you're in Vegas and want to come to a day club, just call seven zero two. Are you? Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Are you sending my? Li- are you sending my good listeners to a strip club? I'll go. You. Bro, you talked about porn and you cussed like a truck driver. Are you right? sending my, my target market? And, like, and, and why don't you send? Why don't you send Jeff Lane VIP passes to the strip club? He's looking for a nice woman. I'm yeah, call absolutely. 702-303-3430. We'll pick you up in our limo, get you in free. I'll buy you around. Just mention. Just, what was just the mention. Last four? 303430 and just mention you know dis- you saw disco I'll get we'll get you a free ride to the club no cover charge and I'll get you free get your free round You're promoting a strip Number club best. on this show You promoted a porn company on your show We talked I did about say porn. their name I did say their name yeah, so what's the big deal? All right, listen. Before you, you, you go, you, you, let's, let's, let's not ignore the fact, bro. He can never go. He can never go. He can never just go. Jeff, he can never just go. Okay, let's let's not discuss. Let's not uh, ignore the fact, okay, that you have gotten. You know, you you're a Christian man, but you have been. You know, you you have sinned. Okay, what, what, if you what, want what, to. I, I, the first of all, I don't even recall what I. Talking about pornography. What did pornography, I say, bro? You're the foul one. Foul language. You should not even cuss. 
What, what, what happened? Uh, first of all, what, what, language, did I use, what language did I use last year, last week? At the S H I T word. You said it repeatedly like six times. Jeff, remember, how many times did you edit that out, Jeff? How many times did he say that in, in succession? I don't think that's a sin. I think sinning is when you say the GD. Vince never used foul language. But, but now yeah, he's going to try and... Bro, the he's only time I me. use freaking foul language is when you're on this show. That's the only... Jeff, is that not the truth? That's the only time I use foul language because you drive me to it, bro. That's why I use the foul language. Unbelievable. You're blaming, taking owner, not taking ownership of your own faults and blaming others. Hey, that, is, that is unbelievable. Listen. That's like you trying to blame me for the fall of WCW, and clearly it's been on the record books that it was your fault. Yeah. Okay? Listen, so before, you know. before you go, you want to say any special, you know, maybe say hello to, hey, Chris. Want to say any special hellos to Chris Jericho or anything? You want to send, throw him, blow him a couple kisses maybe while you're on here? No, there's, there's no way he has time to watch this show. Trust yeah. me. That's great. All right. Say goodbye, Glenn. Goodbye.